Welcome back to Jersey Matters. Has the Jersey Shore recovered from Hurricane Sandy? And are we prepared for the next Hurricane Sandy? We have the perfect people here to answer those questions. Joe Mangino is the co-founder and board president of the New Jersey Organizing Project. And Priscilla Robinson is a community organizer. Thank you both for being here. Let's start with what is the New Jersey Organizing Project? So the New Jersey Organizing Project is a grassroots, nonpartisan organization founded by nine Sandy survivors in the basement of the Stafford Library, whose goal was to get themselves and Sandy families home and make sure they could afford to stay home. So are all the Sandy families home? Or are we good now? No, we're not. There's still about 1,000 families approximately mm -hmm. within the REM program, which was the state pr grant program that provided, you know, disaster support um, after the storm. Um, and those folks are still not home. I think it's almost seven years later. It's six and a half years yeah. after the storm. And how can that be? I, I don't understand. There was so much money. There was so much emphasis. There was so many efforts for uh, recovery and you have a thousand families? Yes, so the state's program was mismanaged from the start. There was a lot of money wasted. Uh, there were also issues with contractor fraud and insurance companies not giving people their fair share. So you put that all together and we had the makings of a, of a disaster, so. That's quite a claim that there was contractor fraud. Has anybody, has there been a criminal investigation into this? There have been several um, contractors indicted, jailed, um, but the people never get their money back. So the people that were in the state's program, their projects grinded to a halt while investigations and indictments were underway. So that's why we have these people sitting here. And if you think about it, you know, six, seven years later, you're paying a mortgage and paying uh, on a rental to live in. So these people are flat broke. No, and I understand. And sometimes there was foreclosure. Sometimes they'd lose their homes as they're waiting for funding, as they're waiting for money. And sometimes they have a home being fixed while they're paying for another home to live in. Mm -hmm. And and so they're they're destitute. They get they're broke. What what is the remedy? Mm, I, so I think the remedy really is about making sure that people who are most impacted by the problems are being uh, given a seat at the table to help make decisions about the solutions we need. Um, because we know that if you're, you know, helicoptering over a situation, you might see the the big scale of the problem, um, but you're not living it day to day. And so I think um, it's really important and imperative that we continue to work with the Murphy administration um, mm -hmm. and make sure that the voices of Sandy survivors continue to ring true. Uh, I understand that's important, but we're pretty far into the process for that, to just have conversations. I mean, we should we should be close to solutions at this point, haven't shouldn't we? We are, and we do have some solutions. So we've, we've worked with um, the Murphy administration. Actually, just on Monday, we did a press conference where they announced a $50 million supplemental fund to help those people. Oh, also extending rental assistance uh, up to 40 months. Plus they took the cap off of the REM program, which now allows you to spend to get more money to help get you home. So we believe those three things right there will help get these this final group of people over the finish line and finally back home. Let, let me point out that the New Jersey, that this association, that's not the only thing you do, mm -hmm. uh, that you deal with other problems, but this is one that has to how you started and it's been, it's been your main focus since then, right? It, it, that's fair to say. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we were born out of Sandy and um, other issues became up came up because of Sandy, and that's what we're working on now. And Priscilla could tell you about the, uh, healthy yeah. oid, the um, opioid crisis that we're dealing with. Yeah, um, so, you know, since Sandy, you know, a couple years ago, I'm sure you probably see, saw it, um, we had the Long Road Home Report, which came out and was a survey that we had done um, of 500 Sandy survivors across the shore about how things were going five years later at the time. Um, and some of the information we got in that report um, was that 70% of people impacted by Sandy are experiencing newer worsening health conditions um, and illnesses and death. Um, and, and others were 19% of that uh, group also experienced a new form of alcohol or drug dependency or addiction. Um, we also started to worry about and our access to... you can link that to Sandy? Is, is it because of mental health issues, because of Sandy or I think or I depression? can let Joe sort of it, yeah, speak to that. Yeah, it's a lot of the stress of dealing with the recovery process where, you know, the recovery process was a full-time job. So if you're displaced from your home, you're living miles away, you have to work to pay all of your expenses, you have to take care of your kids, and you have to spend 40 hours a week trying to get your home rebuilt with um, government officials telling you no, with contractors maybe trying to rip you off. There are so many things that your entire system just gets weakened right. and you're, you're at the lowest point you will probably ever be at. One of the problems with having to deal with the last storm is that if you're focused on that, you're not getting ready for the next storm. Mm -hmm. Where are we on that? So yes, we, we, we focus a lot on getting people home. 
and we do have an eye to the future because here we are, we're back. What's going to happen when the next storm hits? We have learned a lot of lessons from, from Sandy on what to do and certainly what not to do. Um, we need reforms to the flood insurance program. We need to mitigate our coast against, you know, not just natural disasters, but climate change and sea level rise. Um, and unfortunately, all the things we've learned, we're not seeing implemented in other storms. They're not, it's not happening after Harvey, not happening after Irma, didn't happen after Maria. So what we've learned is not um, helping us for the future. And what, what I've read is that New Jersey that was hardest hit is the furthest behind in dealing with these issues. Mm. Other states have dealt with these issues and New Jersey has not because New Jersey is still dealing with the last storm and trying to fix from that. Uh, I, I wanted, I, we moved on from your report and your report is so important. When you have an opioid crisis that so, many, so much money has been put into and you have, a specific, you, have, you have a specific population that's dealing with the opioid crisis, do they get lost in the shuffle? Is there, is there some kind of a special fund for them? Well, I think with the overdose crisis, right, most folks who are experiencing the crisis are getting lost in, in what's happening. And I think people who are dealing with trauma, like from a disaster, for example, like Superstorm Sandy, they're even more you know, behind in the sense that, like, they're dealing with the daily struggle of trying to keep their family together, get home, you know, keep their, keep everything close and, and, and to keep their dignity, um, and they're being left behind. But for example, you know, I, there's a member of ours, um, and, and she's from Galloway Township. She was in recovery, um, using medically assisted treatment, and she was doing well for about nine months. She has a full-time job. She takes care of her mom, and she was doing that when she was using, and also when she was not. Um, but now that she's relapsed recently, one of the things that's a big struggle is like she doesn't want to lose the security she has. And so I think it's really important when we come up with solutions that they're really based in community and about providing evidence-based treatment like medically assisted treatment that includes Suboxone and Methadone. And we really have to treat this like a public health crisis that it is. Well, you keep hearing that we're going to, and it, but we keep having the same problems. It, one of the frustrating things is that we're still dealing with Sandy this many years later mm -hmm. after all of the money that was raised and all of the attention and, and you know you know better than I do that the more time goes by, the less money and attention there is and the harder it is to deal with. So God bless you for doing what you're doing. Joe Mangino, co-founder and board president of New Jersey Organizing Project and Priscilla Robinson, community organizer. Jersey Matters continues right after this. Still to come on Jersey Matters, it's that time of year again. Take your child to work day. It's a big deal in Trenton. We'll take you there when we come right back.